Okay, we're gonna move on down the Monocacy Creek area from the tannery to the waterworks. And again, this is still located along the Monocacy Creek. And you might be asking, well, why did they build all this industry along the Monocacy Creek? You can't float boats up and down it, so what's the point? Well, they used the Monocacy Creek, which did have a higher water level back in the 1700s, in order to drive water wheels, because water wheels provided power, particularly in the mill that we looked at, the Luckenbach Mill. And there was also a water wheel uh, that assisted with some of the processes inside the tannery itself. Farther on down here, uh, in that kind of open uh, piece of dirty area, uh, was originally a foundation for what was called the white tannery. Now the white tannery is different than a regular tannery in that it makes use of a different form of animal hide. While the manger tannery made use of cow and horse because those leathers are thicker, heavier, and more resilient, the white tannery made use of things like goat hide. Now, why would you need something that was less sturdy when you're making leather goods? Well, glad you asked. The white tannery would have been used to manufacture things such as book bindings. And the book binding industry was a big thing here in Moravian society. They published a lot of materials, hymnal books, these types of things uh, needed to have some type of protective cover on them. And so they were bound in leather. The other thing, of course, that is nice uh, to use uh, the white tannery for is things like the manufacture of gloves, right? You can't have real heavy, stiff, work gloves made out of cow hide or horse hide, you're gonna make them out of something softer like goat hide. And so uh, gloves that folks would have wore back in the day to keep their, protect their hands during work hours or to wear to good occasions just to keep their hands warm, these types of things also would have been manufactured in the white tannery. And so it had a very distinct uh, niche uh, to fill in colonial society. The other thing that would have been located along the Monocacy, that building no longer exists, is where they did flaxseed oil production. Now, flax is, was a uh, material that was a uh, plant that was brought over from Europe, uh, grant, grown here, and the seeds yield a particular type of oil. The oil could be used to treat things, particularly wood products, in order to protect them from the elements. You can also use flax to make clothes. Yes, early Moravians made their clothes from flax, not cotton like we have today. And so uh, all the clothing you would have seen on early settlers would have been made of this material. And it either came out white, as you see many of the uh, reenactors wearing, or they would have been dyed uh, completely black, particularly if you were going to church services and those sorts of things. So flax played a very important role in the manufacturing of cloth and clothing. Now, the large structure that is still standing here that's made of stone, and it is the original structure, is what's called the old waterworks. This was devised so that water could be pumped up the hill and into the community so that folks didn't have to walk all the way down to the spring house in order to obtain their water. It was built in 1754 and began to pump water using a water wheel as power source uh, to force the water up through wooden pipes into the upper community. So in order to get the water from down here up there, it's about 60 yards uh, that the pump house had to pump. And this was the very first pump house built in North America. Uh, and it's amazing that it's still standing. And as a, as a matter of fact, they've had folks from Central Europe come over and rework the internal mechanisms uh, so that it is actually still functional. It doesn't work on a water wheel any longer because obviously the sluices that bring the water in are no longer here, but they can hook it up to another motor and actually make the, uh, the, the pump work and all the machinery work. So it's a very, very inter interesting uh, piece of technology and just shows how uh, technically adept the Moravians were and bringing technology from Europe and applying it here in the New World. So this was the very first one ever built in North America. Uh, you didn't have one of these in Philadelphia, you didn't have one in Boston, you didn't have one in New York, but you did have one here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Uh, you'll also know that there's a bridge across the Monocacy. That would not have existed at the time. Uh, that's obviously a new function as well as the uh, roadway bridge that you see uh, just to the right of the uh, pump house. So those are modern additions that would not have existed. There were other buildings located down here, things like candle making facilities um, and various other structures um, that didn't, weren't built as robust because there weren't as many people working in them. They didn't require multiple floors. But the Monocacy really was the lifeblood of this industrial district. And so uh, that's why we took a tour down and through here. Uh, now we're going to move from this area over to the main living quarters, uh, which were now part of uh, Moravian College.